Now let's look at the past exam question related to culture within your notes. And this question that the industry is in the electronic components industry from your December 2010, question 3 part A. So it's in your notes. So first of all, let's see the requirements. It's going to analyse the company using the cultural web because the examiner has specifically asked you to use the cultural web that's the reason why you have to use that. And also, or any other proper framework. So that means, within your answer, if you haven't showed a framework related to the analysis of culture, you cannot get the marks related to the model marks in the exam. So perhaps you can only get half of the 15 marks in the exam if you have produced those answers without any framework. So, or any other framework for understanding organisation culture. So that's, that means what you need to do is, from my perspective, when you see the word culture, always think about the culture web in the exam. So let's remind ourselves, first of all, what do I mean by culture web? So culture web is said that the paradigm of the company will be affected by six other elements. Of course, I told you before in our previous section is we're going to use mnemonic called PS Cross. To summarise the elements within the culture web. So first P is what company does and what is missioned, etc. So that's the paradigm of the organisation. And secondly, we have got the S for structure of power. Your power structure within your organisation is one. And C stands for control system within the organisation. Okay. So, for example, the reward system, your punishment. And also we've got the R, the rituals and routines. So that means it's your daily uh, action done by the employees within the organisation. And also O stands for the organisational structure because this would determine your power structure as we've seen before. Because for example if your organisation is centralised for example, it's up to one uh, CEO to make the decision for example and uh, that's the organisation structure as well. Okay, And then for this organisation structure another 2S so for example we've got the stories that we told to them, uh, tell the employees and also we've got the symbols Is what, for example, the nice office given to those employees if you work hard. So that, that's the culture web. And all we need to do in the exam is we're going to slot the information with regards to the scenario to this particular model. It's called PS Cross. But in the exam, remember, you cannot lay out your answer such as this because it's just for illustrative purposes. And of course, you can see the answer on your next page of your notes. Make sure you're going to write your answer one point equals to one sentence and for each point that you've made, two to three lines. Make sure you're going to apply your answer directly to the, uh, to the case study as well. Now, let's see then this question. So we're told introduction, the free gates limited is based in the country of Eden. It imports elect electrical components from other countries and distribute them throughout the domestic market. So that means the import is electric components. So, uh, I mean, on top of the culture side, when you are importing something from other countries, of course, you have to think about quite lots of risks attached to it. So, for example, whether or not there will be a risk that your exchange rate will change, and as a result of it, you have to uh, set the payments more.
than you originally uh, should in the first place. We've talked about how to account for the foreign exchange rate changes for different transactions, for example. Yes, those are the things that we talked about in the previous papers. So, moving on then, the company was formed 20 years ago by Ron, who now owns 80% of shares. A further 10% of the company is owned by his wife and 5% by, each, by his two daughters. And that means clearly this company is the family-based company structure. So if that's the case then, normally the family-based companies that are shareholders dislike risks. Because not only they want to make money, but also they want to succeed or, I mean, last forever, for, uh, I mean, allow the company to last forever. So that's the reason why, yeah, this is the family-based company style. But also, it can mean that this company might be a small company because no other investor is interested in your company, perhaps, or perhaps you're reluctant to sell your company to, for example, the venture capitalists, uh, for, for example, to those business angels. So as a result of it, yes, those would be the uh, things that we like to consider when we read uh, that information here. Okay, so we know that this is the family-based company. So now let's look at the second paragraph. So, although he has never been in the na Navy, Rond is obsessed by ships, sailing and Navy history. So, he's known to everybody as the commander And this, is, uh, and this is how he expects his employees to address him. So if that's the case, then, of course, I mean, he expects somebody to address him, so that commander would simply be the symbols. Okay, so for example, we can talk about symbols. For example, the commander. He increasingly spends time on his own boat, an expensive motor cruiser, which is moored in the local harbour, 20 minutes drive away. So, and also, as, as you can see, expensive motor cruiser. So, that means this will also be a symbol as well. boat. So that to me, from the organisation's perspective, I mean, when reading this sentence, as you can see, the CEO spends lots of time on this expensive motor cruiser. Okay, no problem. So that means to me, if I work hard, I can also spend my money or spend my time on this expensive motor cruiser like the CEO does. So if that's the case, of course, to some extent, this will motivate the employee. But we have to question whether or not this is the case, yes, uh, within this organisation. So we say, uh, when he is not on holiday, Ron is always at work at 8am in the morning and makes sure the employees arrive on time. It's also there at 5.30pm to ensure that the employees will not leave early. So as a result of it, as you can see, so that is the rituals and routines within the organisation. So that means it has to make sure everybody arrives at work on time. So that's the rituals and routines. So for example, arrive at work on time and not leave the company early. So to me, it's quite fair, isn't it? Because the CEO arrives at work on time and will not leave the company very early. So to me, from the employee's perspective, if I work for Ron, I feel that this is quite fair. It's the fair term. 
I'm happy to stay here because first of all I see the symbols is very good because if you work hard, becomes the CEO for example, or becomes the director, perhaps you will have the boat, quite expensive, and also CEO will arrive at work on time and leave, uh, not leaving the company early. But, let's read on, he spent a large part of a working day on his boat. Oh, this is not quite fair. Although, he arrives at the company on time, but he's not working within that company, but rather he spent lots of time on his boat only. So, as a result of it, this seems to me that this is not fair. So, although he can be contacted by mobile phone, okay, so employees who arrive late for work have to immediately explain the circumstances to Ron. So, if he feels that the explanation is unacceptable, then he makes an appropriate deduction from the employees. Okay, so that's talking about the reward system within that company. As you can see, the control system in there is the focus on the punishment. So that means if you arrive at work very late, punish you. So to some extent, perhaps this would not motivate the employees within an organisation. So you can talk about that in the exam. Okay, not just talking about, I mean, you focus upon the punishment, but also add a little bit of thought. For example, this will not motivate the employees in the, uh, in the company, for example. Wages, like all other costs in the company, are closely monitored by one. As we can see before, so this is the family-based company, and as a result of it, normally the power structure will be centralised by Rom. Centralisation of power. Centralisation of power to determine um, how much money we'll go pay for you and, uh, how, I mean, when we punish you, for example. So those are the bits and pieces that I can talk about. So before we read uh, the next of our paragraph, so We've made the comments related to symbols, structure of power, control system and rituals and routines. But it's very, very important for you to give a short definition for the symbols, structure of power, control system, rituals and routines as well. Okay? So, for example, the um, structure of power, the short definition for this is who makes the decision. And then control system, for example, will include the financial quality and reward system. The rituals and routines is the daily action. done by the employees so symbols for example the office because this will motivate the employees to own those symbols if they work hard for example, if you stay within that company for another five years, you become the audit partner or audit manager, you have a nice office, nice car, so that will be the symbols. It also motivates you uh, to stay within that company, for example. And also stories is what is valued by the company. And also organisational structure is, for example, the 
a functional structure, having lots of departments or simple structure, or perhaps simple structures. So that means the box here controls the team. So it's, I mean, it's apparent in this particular company that it's a simple structure organization because Ron controls everything rather than having separate departments. And also, for example, we've got the divisional structure. For example, we have lots of subsidiaries. So that means for different structures, that impacts the procedures in the company. Okay. So I'll give a short definition for each of those, first of all, before we move any further. And now let's see the employees, customers, and the suppliers here. So the company currently has 25 employees primarily undertaking sales, warehousing, accounts, and admin. Although the employees are normally allocated to one role, they are also required to work anywhere in the company as required by Ron. So if that's the case then, well, that means their work will be determined by Ron so that means the power structure of the organization, as you can see, is centralization of power by ROM because first of all we talked about the previous one, for example, it's up to ROM to make any deduction from their wages and secondly it's up to ROM to tell them where to work. So for example, related to wages and where to work. That's the centralization of power. And also we're toasting a question in the next of our paragraph. They're also expected to help Ron in personal tasks, such as booking holidays for his family, filing his personal tax returns, and organizing social events. And as a result of it, surely that this particular thing would be the rituals and routines. It's the daily uh, action done by the employees, for example, responsible for Ron's personal task. I'm not saying that this is not correct and this is not good. I'm not saying that. I'm just using culture web to make the objective assessment of the culture within this organisation and how it affects that the employees may work and how it affects their motivation as well. Okay. Right, so moving on then. So all the employees at the Frigid Company are only given a minimum holiday allocation. So if that's the case then, well, I mean, it's the minimum holiday allocation. This will would this motivate employees within the company then? Well, perhaps the answer for this is no, it's not quite uh, motivating the employees within the organisation because as you can see the rituals and routines here, so they do lots of work but they are given minimum holidays they have to use this allocation not only for holidays but also other events such as visiting doctor, attending funeral and dealing with domestic problems, emergencies. So as a result of it, that means there will be no flexibility for those employees who work within the company um, but rather for the rituals and routines from the CEO's perspective, of course, the CEO can spend lots of time during his work on the expensive boat, but employees cannot do that, and they are given minimum holidays. And as a result of it, it's not fair. So you can say that it's not fair when you are comparing this with the CEO's style. And of course, this will not motivate the employees. So also we are told Ron is particularly inflexible about holidays and work hours has even turned down his request for the unpaid leave. Okay, he's not flexible at all for the employees. In contrast, Ron is often away from work 
for long periods of sailing in various parts of the world. And as a result of it, this is not very, very fair. And this will demotivate the employees. I also told Ron is increasingly critical of suppliers. Okay, saying that suppliers trying to sell me low quality goods for higher prices and also customers moaning about prices and paying later and later. The site in general is the period work in the Navy would do everyone good. I've also been in dispute with the tax authority who is accused of uh, squandering his hard earned money as well. So that means as you can see these are the stories that one has told his employees what's what, of what's going on within the organisation. So, for example, in this case, a story we can talk about, for example, related to the customers always paying late and the suppliers are not integrated because they always sell us low quality of goods with high price, for example, and also lazy staff, as well. So if that's the case, as you can see, if you if you have a CEO such as Ron here, spending all of his time sailing on the expensive boats across the world, for example, and also given minimum wages and uh, sorry minimum holidays to his employees, and asking the employees to not only doing his work, for example, for the simple structure because for the organisational structure he has employed 25 employees responsible for many of these things but also responsible for his personal tasks as well. And also if the staff is lazy and also arrive at work not on time uh, they will be punished. As a result of it if, you are, if I were the employee of course I would not be happy to stay with this. Uh, CEO. Okay. Right. Okay, so investigation by the tax authority led to him being fined for not disclosing the fact that significant family expenditure, such as holiday for his daughters, has been declared as the company expenditure. So that means they spent lots of time, uh, lots of money from the company to buy the gift for his daughters. As a result of it, I mean, this is quite lucrative, isn't it? Because not only uh, he sells all, I mean, across the globe uh, using his expensive boats, but also he spends lots of money from the company to pay for his daughter. Not uh, using his money to invest uh, in the company's profitable projects, for example. Um, so as a result of it, this is quite a little bit lucrative. And hence, why you're going to do that? I mean, why the company is doing that? Because maybe Ron uh, has taken uh, significant risks when operating his business. Uh, so we sort of it, uh, he's awarded to those return and take that return to buy the gifts, for example. Uh, perhaps that will be his explanation for this. Uh, but I mean, from our perspective, as you can see, by analysing his culture, we can determine his paradigm of this company first of all what it does is importing the components from overseas and also the is the family-based company. So think about it this way, if Ron dies, if Ron dies, uh, perhaps there will be no other suitable staff to govern this company, for example. Um, and it's the family-based company and also um, the, it's quite centralised, it's the centralisation of power by Ron. So it's 
the lucrative style as well. Not cheating the employees very good, as you can say. So if that's the case then, of course, it will impact on its values and also mission of the organisation's one. So that means why the company exists, because they like to make money. And when the company makes money, we are not giving them to employees, but rather we're going to spend those money in buying what we want. So that's the, um, I mean, this is the paradigm. So that means it's the, uh, uh, the six other elements, as you can see, is the rituals, the routine, structure of power, control system, organization, structure, stories, and symbols will affect what company does and its mission and values. And as you can see, by analyzing its culture, employees may feel that it's unfair and uh, the employees may be demotivated as well. As a result of it, I don't think that this company can last forever. Okay, so as you can see, you can see the answer uh, onto your next of our pages taken from the ACCA. So that uh, this finishes off our question on culture. And hope you're happy with the culture section. I make sure you're going to rework this question and generate into many, uh, many of these ideas in the exam. Make sure for each point that you're going to make, you're going to explain why, including its impact as well. So see you in the next of our section. APC, accounting for your future.